It's been it's been a while. <laughs> it's not been a while. It's been less than a week <laughs> since we've been here in these exact seats. Apparently, I am still sick. <laughs> Today, we're talking about a new. Good job. Blu-ray release. <laughs> so today we're talking about the new release from Arrow video of the One Missed Call trilogy. So, so yeah, we Tell just wanted we wanted to look at this set. We just finished watching all three of the movies and a bunch of the extras. There are a lot of extras <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. That There's sounds so much going on in this. <clears throat> like it's it looks little, but it's mm -hmm. cram packed. Oh, this is so big. And the price is so small. So it's a double disc. Yes. That's how much content there is. We've got the booklet. There's always an essay. This one is by Anton Vittel. Apologies if I have mispronounced your name. So in addition to the book, of course, you've got the reversible uh, cover. The set contains three movies, which are One Miss Call, mm -hmm. uh, One Miss Call 2, mm -hmm. and One Miss Call Final. One Miss Call... It starts with like a group of high schoolers mm -hmm. and like there's this rumor going around that like people are dying after they get a phone call. Later on, like the main characters end up being part of what's going on and they start seeing deaths happen yeah. because of the phone call or like after the phone call. It seems to be because of the phone call. I don't know. OMG. <laughs> Spooky scary. It really goes like deep into the backstory of what's actually going on. And the first one is directed by Takashi Miike. As far as I know, this was the first like straight horror movie that he had done since Audition. Then, then you got One Miss Call 2. One Miss Call 2. Which they really missed the uh, they missed the boat on that one. They could have called it Two Miss Calls. <laughs> so the second one deals more heavily with it's actually like two sets of main characters that kind of overlap. Similar younger like teenage type woman and her uh, boyfriend, or maybe teens, early 20s, yeah. and her boyfriend who have realized that there's another wrinkle in the situation where they realize that you can sort of take over someone else's call and you can die instead of them. They go further into where the calls might have been coming from, mm. where they might have started. There's this whole thing where they leave Japan for half of the movie and go to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. The second one was directed by uh, Rempei Tsukamoto. So you got that one. And then you got One Miss Call Final. Yeah, that one was really interesting. It was like basically back to the high school aged people. Mm -hmm. They're on a trip. They actually go to Korea. They've all been given cell phones and it's the whole group and the whole group is aware of what's going on. And there's a lot, there's a like allegory with bullying and Stylistically, it's a different feel. The third one was directed by Manabu Aso. So all three of them have different directors. Yep. So all three of them are completely different stylistically. And all three of them have different actors, mm -hmm. too. There's very little overlap in the cast. There's a little bit, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. So what did you think? Just as far as, before we get into any of the extras, what did you think about each of the films? Like, I'll just talk about them as a whole. Yeah. When I first watched these, watching the first, second, and third, I felt that... After watching the second one, I was like, oh, wow, this one's my favorite. And then when we started the third one, I was like, this one's good. I don't like it as much as the second, but I think I like it more than the first. But by the end of the third one, I definitely felt that I was like, oh, yeah, number one is second for me. Mm -hmm. So it would be the second one was absolutely my favorite, like no holds barred than the first and the second or than the third. But I liked them all. I thought they were all really different stylistically. The first one, the reason it wasn't my favorite is just because it it wasn't very cohesive. The plot wasn't, in my opinion. But the suspense that it builds up and, like, the way it's shot and, like, everything tense and, like, you're, like, on the edge of your seat. Like, what's going to happen? The second one, the second one was what I would say was creepy. Yes. Like, it had that, like, uh, there, like There was a lot feeling. more... The first one, because it was me, okay, there were certain parts that would be grotesque or, like, sp spoopy. But they were all very, like, glossy. Mm -hmm. The second one was a lot more subtle. Because there'd yeah. be things that would just be in the background and there'd be no musical sting or even, like, any acknowledgement of the presence. It would just be, like, there and you would have to notice it. And then with the third one, the third one is a lot more grotesque. 
And that's not my kind of horror. Mm-hmm. It's not like body horror. Yeah, visual shock, I mm-hmm. would say, than the than the first two. That one, it just didn't appeal to me. But I think other people would pr- prefer that over mm-hmm. the tension in the first one and the mm-hmm. creepiness, creepiness in the second one. There were there were definitely moments where the attempted shock value was p- pushed to a point where it almost felt like a B movie. I mostly agree. I I think I think the second one is the strongest because it does what a good sequel should do. It takes like the mythos and the atmosphere and everything of the original and it builds upon it instead of just repeating it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't feel really derivative of the first one. It feels like it's genuinely its own thing. It has its own goals, all that kind of stuff. The third one, on the other hand, it tried some new things, but for the most part, it felt, out of the three, the most derivative. I mean, they're all close to each other in quality, but... The second one's just your favorite. The second one's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, definitely. Yeah. So the extras on this are oh like... Oh my gosh. There is so much going on. So first of all, can we talk about that alternate ending? If you get this, if you get this set... Watch the alternate ending yes. for One Was Called. One, the first I, one. I highly, yes. Yes. highly recommend it. Yes. It is it is a must, a must watch. What? Absolutely. Why are you laughing? No, it it's, it's true. It's it, the, it was honestly, amazing. I would say that's the best of the extras. But it's not. If it weren't for the uh, behind the scenes bit that is following Hyun Suk Jung. The, oh my god! The uh, <laughs> Korean actor from the third movie, who not only did he not really speak Japanese, he was still learning it, but he also had to learn Japanese sign language for this movie. Yeah. Um, and so it's all behind the scenes stuff of him speaking broken Japanese and then speaking with a translator mm-hmm. in Korean and talking about how excited he is about learning Japanese. And it's just, it was so relatable as people who are also learning the language. <laughs> It was great. He kept trying to say it was delicious, like past tense, and he said "mashita oishi." Oh my gosh, that was the best part. That was the best part. I feel like I, I just it. I want "mashita oishi" to be mm-hmm. like a thing. It's almost like I wish I had watched the behind the scenes for part three before watching it because I almost feel like I would have liked that movie more if I had seen those. You think so? Yeah, there was yeah. so much going on. There's this whole like mini documentary thing mm-hmm. between the main female yes. lead and yep. the that character. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh my gosh, like if this had been part of the movie, I would have felt more of a connection. And mm-hmm. like I, it, there there was information in in it that was not present in the movie that was like, oh, I understand this now. It was really it was cool to see that. Mm-hmm. Like right after having watched the movie. There's not just the behind the scenes thing with him and the uh, like love story prelude thing that you're talking about. Uh-huh. There's also a an hour behind the scenes thing for the movie, and there's another actual behind the scenes thing for the movie. Um, and that's the movie. The first thing I thought would probably be going to stop going. I suppose it's like the first movie. Like the first movie. Like the first movie. Um, and it was the first movie. Yeah. And then everyone being like, "Oh my god, the second movie is the second." I feel like I feel like you should like do this part, but like speed up the audio. One of my favorite parts about the extras mm-hmm. was actually the uh, deleted scenes from the second movie. But there were two that I was like, man, I wish these had been in the film. There's this lore from the deleted scene that like it had originated with letter writing mm-hmm. and like the letters were written in the handwriting of the person who received the letter. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like this would be so cool. Like yeah. well, if you like horror at all, if you like J-horror especially, and if you really like diving into the like content that you consume, this is a really good collection for learning a whole lot yes. and also getting like a very like Javanese um, like behind the scenes because oh a, a lot of the behind the scenes are like like TV spots, right? Right. You know, they're so from like there's, TV shows and stuff. You, so it has like all the like funny commentary mm. and they're like and the like sound and, effects and everything. Yeah. Is, you're getting so much more content. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really enjoyed the content. And I almost had more fun watching the extras yeah. than I did the movies themselves because I could really just kind of start piecing things together in my mind. And, mm-hmm. and that was really fun for me. I mean, this is like the the Ringu set that they put out last October. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just the, the, the enormity of what is in here 
I mean, we didn't even say anything about the like uh, cleaning up the picture and everything and making it 1080p. Oh yeah, I mean like, all that. All yeah, that good stuff. I didn't even. I didn't even yeah, notice. Like, you don't like, even think yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, it was. It looked good because they do that with all their releases. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely check this one out mm -hmm. if um if you guys are at all interested and uh definitely check it out by a certain month later this year because the things that we may or may not be doing about these movies may or may not have spoilers on them so you should watch them first okay my love you